Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Clemzess here with Adam Atkinson, episode four in our third series on PEDs. This time we're talking about insulin as a little bit of a segue from growth hormone, because as Adam said, sometimes these are paired because of some synergy, uh, even going all the way back up to the, the thyroid hormone. So uh, this is another scary one for me, Adam, because I know what this does in the body. I know what having too much can do. I've heard the horror stories even within the bodybuilding community. So tell us why somebody would choose insulin, how to do it, where those breakpoints are for, for safety versus efficacy. Mm -hmm. This is one of those things you have to address very appropriately and slowly. I'm trying to think where to start here. I, anyone that's listening to this before they even consider it should be testing their fasted levels to make sure you know where your baseline is. So when you take exogenous insulin, it's going to lower your blood sugar levels because you're going to uptake more food into the muscle tissue. There's two different types of insulin. There's basal and then there's analog insulins. Basals are usually longer acting. So they're more controllable. They're more safe, so to speak. When you look at Novalin N, it's just sold over the counter at Walmart, even without prescription. So actual insulin is sold over the counter at Walmart. Over the counter at Walmart. Wow. Yeah. The shit you learn on so, Contest Prep University. Well, it's interesting because, you know, you always hear the, you know, and I don't want to deem it as safe, but when they do it like that, it is pretty idiot proof for the most part. So you still have to have some caution with it. But when you listen to bodybuilding media, you're like insulin's killing everyone. That's because they're using the analogs and they're not timing their food correctly or they're taking too much but the the analogs are very fast acting much more dangerous and you know this is how people have you know died eating uh trying to get food in so they their blood you know, sugar just plummets out. to the point where they die yeah like a yeah, literal type one diabetic shock yep that's essentially what can happen and that's what can go wrong so, you know, this is something you have to be very, very careful with, and it, it can be useful for muscle growth for certain. And again, with this one, you're not creating any androgens. So it, it is one of those things you can use and not vir virilize a female's physique as well. But it's also, too, I think one of those things you use for more advanced users that have tried everything. And, you know, this is kind of the last thing that they pair with maybe growth hormone. And, and it's for massive growth because insulin is to shuttle calories or nutrients into cells. So glucose into muscle cells. And yeah. so it's not this thing that you take, Hey, I'm going to get super lean. Let's inject insulin. This is, this is primarily for off season to make sure that you're really getting a crazy level of anabolic environment. Right. You could use it in season, but probably not for very long and I'd be leery about using it, you know, closer to shows, you can get a little fullness with it on like a peak per se, but I would just rather time my food better and be more on top of the peak week versus like rely on that for maximum fullness. Yeah. So this story goes back several, several years when this first just became a thing within the, the professional community. But some friends of mine who were very high level in the industry uh, were talking about an IFBB pro they were training with. And this guy had in his vehicle injected insulin and they were doing whatever they're going to do before they go work out. The guy ends up going into a diabetic shock and they, they had to just open up his unconscious mouth and pour maple syrup down his unconscious throat just to try and get enough sugar back in his body so that he wouldn't die. And so I think that's about the point I checked out on even considering insulin as a, as a helpful drug in the sport. Did he live? Uh, yeah. I mean, they made it sound like that's just an everyday occurrence. Like, yeah, sometimes you got to do that. Wow. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's, that's the line you can cross. And, 
Uh, how do you know when you're, you know, right there at that threshold, when your blood sugar gets down, you know, from 50 to 40 to 30, and then all of a sudden you're unconscious, like who knows what to do? Mm -hmm. I think one big point I want to drive home with this is, you know, you, you can end up going from Clen to insulin very quickly with this, you know, you try one thing, you start trying others. So I would just urge our audience to, Take your time and be patient. Uh, don't keep jumping to the next thing. Actually give things that you try time to work. And mm -hmm. then also, you know, just like that, that's just somebody who's probably not testing their blood sugar anymore because they're so dang comfortable with it. And when you decide to go down that route, you got to treat it like you would if you're, you know, carrying a firearm or something and uh even with that people sometimes get too comfortable and they shoot themselves so you really want to make sure you take all the precautions that you would take your first time using it as you do your you know 200th time using it and like we talked about in the previous series i mean there are medical professionals some some physicians in the anti-aging uh realm that, that will help competitors like this so uh, let's let's uh, let's dive into our fifth and final episode in this series. We're going to come back next time in our next episode talking about diuretics. So when you're actually making that jump to the stage. So we will see you next time in Contest Prep University.